All right, let's talk about indexes and how they work. So in this video, I'm going to discuss the world's most important indexes and give you uh, just a breakdown on how they work, how long they've been around. We'll talk about a lot more indexes than just the ones you're familiar with. And then I'll wrap up this video by talking about how we calculate the value and the percentage change of the various indexes around the world. Uh, there's two broad types of indexes. We have price weighted and value weighted indexes. So let's get started. So what is an index? An index measures the current price behavior of a representative group of stocks or other assets in relation to a base value set at an earlier point in time. In other words, indexes show how the average price of that bundle of securities grows or declines over time. And we have two types of indexes based on how they're calculated. We have these value-weighted indexes and we have price-weighted indexes. Price-weighted indexes are older and more easy to calculate an average from. Now, before we calculate the index returns and values, let's talk about the most prominent indexes in the world. First, we have the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You've seen this undoubtedly, the DJIA. Uh, this is an index that has 30 large blue chip stocks of US firms. So let's take a look at what these are right now. Okay, so here is the list of the Dow Jones Industrial Average stocks. And like I said, these are blue chip stocks. Uh, they are obviously not doing great today as the time as I record this video. So Apple, Boeing, Caterpillar, these are all blue chip stocks, household names. Uh, these are stocks that everyone would recognize. They're, to be on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you really have to be a leader in your industry. So you might see you know, companies like Ford on here, uh, Visa, Boeing. I would argue that Boeing is probably not the leader in its industry, but hey, whatever. Uh, so there it is. These are industrial stocks or stocks that are market leaders. Now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has been around since 1896, making it one of our oldest indexes in the world. Uh, the stocks comprising the index have changed throughout time. Uh, for example, General Electric was listed on the index from 1896 until 2018, after its market cap fell to uh, an unacceptable level. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, as a side note, is arguably our best example of a price weighted average. Now, another industry or index you should be familiar with is the S&P 500 index. And this is a value weighted index. It takes 500 large companies or large cap companies listed on the NYSE or the NASDAQ, and it creates an index with them. These are not necessarily the largest because some stocks are not included. Uh, for a long time, Tesla hasn't been included, some other stocks aren't because they have poor corporate governance. Uh, but let's take a look at what's in the S&P 500 index. All right, so I'm on the Business Insider website and they keep a, a running list or an up-to-date list of all the S&P 500 stocks as of right now. So a, a large number of these stocks are also going to be on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I'm sure we'll see Boeing in here. Uh, Amazon, all, all the big companies that are on the Dow. Uh, so 500 of these across all industries. Now the Dow, the, the S and P 500 index, this index captures about 85 to 90% of the total U S market cap of publicly traded companies. And that's the reason why whenever we talk about the market in the United States, very often, our first proxy for the market is this S&P 500 index. Uh, there are other proxies like, oh, the, you know, oh, there's the Russell 3000, Wilshire 5000. Uh, S&P 500 is, I mean, it, it's our first go-to, mostly because it's large caps. Now, Standard & Poor's, they're a private organization, and they put out a lot of other prominent indexes. Uh, I've already talked about the S&P 500 for large caps, but there's also a mid-cap index, the S&P 400, and this comprises, or it's comprised of about, well, exactly 400 medium-sized companies, uh, so companies with market caps somewhere between like 2 and 
oh, $10 billion. And then we also have the S&P 600, which is a small cap index. And these stocks are typically going to have market caps between about, oh, 500 million. And I don't know the exact number, but it's probably one to two billion. Uh, so uh, these indexes, they account for a lot less than uh, the S&P 500 in terms of total market cap. And then we also have the S&P total market index, which is essentially the S&P 1500. And it includes all three of these. Now, there are dozens of other indexes out there. Uh, you know, the NASDAQ composite is really, anytime you see a listing of indexes, it's usually the third index besides the DJIA and the S&P 500. It includes most of the NASDAQ firms. We can also have indexes that track specific industries like the transportation industry or the utility industry. And then uh, we can also have, I guess I've mentioned the Wilshire 5000. This is comprised of somewhere around 5,000 stocks. Uh, a lot of stocks will drop out. We may have more than that. We may have less than that at, at any given time. This one, it comprises pretty much all of the publicly traded market cap in the U.S., uh, but we, we just default to the S&P 500 for ease. Now, outside of the U.S., we have many different indexes. These track stocks in various markets. So the Nikkei, uh, this is a price-weighted index. Uh, it's comprised of 225 stocks, and that track tracks the Tokyo Stock Exchange. The DAX tracks German stocks. So again, it's, you know, it's kind of like the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the U.S. Tracks 30 major German companies. Uh, the Hong Sung, that tracks companies in Hong Kong. And Bovespa, it's an index in the Brazilian market. All right, so let's talk about the price-weighted and value-weighted methods for calculating an, indre an index value. Uh, Price-weighted indexes, like I said, they're very, very simple. They're literally just an average of the prices of the stocks in that index. So let's say we have two stocks in an index, Apple and Google. Apple shares are trading at 100 a share, and Google shares are trading at $700 a share. The price of the index, or the value of the index, is literally just the weighted, av or just the average here. It's just 100 plus 700 divided by two stocks. So our price weighted average is 400 as of right now. Now let's say that we want to calculate the return on this price weighted index. So in this case, Apple share price increases from uh, 100 to 110 and Google share price appreciates from 800 to 900. What would our index value and our return be? Well, our index value in the next period is going to be just the average, so 110 plus 900 divided by 2, minus 400 divided by 400, that would get us our return. So our, our new index value is going to be 505, and our return is just calculated using our standard return formula, price at the end minus price at the beginning, all divided by price at the beginning. And our return on this index is 26.25%. Okay, now there are cases where a stock will split, and this happens very frequently. We've seen this a lot for the pretty much the big tech stocks, if you're familiar with the term the Magnificent Seven, the big, big tech stocks like Alphabet and Apple. Uh, now, price-weighted index, indexes, they have to account for uh, possible stock splits. And to do this, we have to find a divisor that makes the new sum of prices equal to the old sum of prices. So let's say in our current example, Google undergoes a two for one share split. So they used to have, let's say a thousand shares. Now they have 2000 shares and each share is worth half as much. So originally, uh, you know, our, the way we calculated the price of the index was just taking a hundred plus 700 divided by two and our initial index value is 400. Now, to get our new divisor, what we do is we take 100 plus the current share price after the split, which is 700 divided by 2, because it's a 2 for 1 split, and we keep our old index value the same, 400, and we solve for the new divisor. And that new divisor, once we solve for D, is 1.125. Now, going forward, this is the divisor we use when determining the index value. So you might be wondering, why is the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the 30 
thousands or it you know could reach 40,000? Well, the answer is a lot of the stocks that trade on that are listed in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, they've just kept splitting over time. So even though the share prices of those stocks are not in the 30,000s or 40,000s or more, uh, quite frankly, they've undertaken huge numbers of stock splits over the life of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And so ultimately, this divisor has, has changed a lot. And, you know, the, the value of the Dow Jones Industrial Average has reflected these share splits. Okay, so that's enough about the pr price weighted average. I mean, quite frankly, it's literally just the average price of the stocks traded on or listed in that index. The more interesting average, which I think is more representative of the stocks in an index, is the value weighted average. And this is a case where we take the, or the market cap of all the stocks in the index and we weight the prices based on those market caps. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking the total market cap of all the stocks in the index, and that's gonna be just our our, our value of this index or our starting uh, total value. And to get our index return, we're just taking our market value at a later time period. So it's really just nothing more than total market cap of the entire index at time period one. So just the, the sum of all the stock prices, so number of shares times price per share, and subtract from that the uh, number of shares outstanding times price per share at the earlier period, and divide that by the sum of the shares divided by price for every stock in that index. Uh, now, we can calculate the return here, but usually these valuated indexes like the S&P 500, they'll start out with a, with a starting value of 100. So with these valuated indexes, we don't really care what the value is. We're more concerned about what the return on the index is because the, the starting value was 100. It was set arbitrarily just to something that everyone uh, kind of respects. So let's take a look at a quick example. You have two securities and they make up the bad index. Calculate the return on the valuated, this valuated bad index. All right, so to get us started, we've got two stocks, A and B. They you know, have different shares outstanding, and the price per share will change depending on the day. So stock A goes from 15 to 18, uh, stock B goes from 20 to 22, and we have 1,000 and 2,000 shares uh, outstanding respectively. So the first thing that we do to calculate the valuated index return is we calculate the market cap for each of these stocks, and then we sum up the total market cap for all stocks on a given day. So stock A's market cap plus stock B's market cap on day one, and stock A plus stock B's market cap on day two. To get our valuated index return, what we're gonna do is sum those up. So we have 1,000 shares outstanding for stock A times $15 per share, and we have 2,000 shares outstanding and 20 per share. So total market cap on day one, 55,000. Total market cap on day two, shares outstanding stay the same for both stocks. It's only the price per share that changes. And so our total market cap on day two, 62,000. And we just apply the return formula, just price at the end, or in this case, total market cap at the end or the later period, minus the total market cap at the earlier period all divided by the total market cap at the earlier period. So in this case, it's just 62,000 minus 55,000, all divided by 55,000, which gives us an index value of 12.73%, or, or I shouldn't say value, this is our return. Okay, so let's try one more example just to really hammer this home. Uh, index returns are really no one's favorite thing in an intro investments class, but you should know how this is done. So here we have another example. Two securities make up the good index. Calculate the return on the valuated good index. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by calculating our total market cap on the first day. So we have two stocks, shares outstanding are here, price per share for each are listed here, total market cap for all stocks on this index is 500 times 10, 
10 is the price per share of stock A, 800 shares outstanding for stock B times 12 per share for stock B. Total market cap on day two is, you know, same number of shares outstanding times price per share plus number of shares outstanding times price per share. And this gives us a lower market cap on day two. Next, here's our formula for the index return for valuated indexes. We just plug our numbers in. So 11,200 minus 14,600, all divided by 14,600. And our index return is negative 23.29%. Not very good. Uh, this index is going through some hard times. Or rather, the market is going through some hard times. I probably should say that. So in this case, our answer is answer choice A, 23.29. All right, so let's summarize. We have three major indexes in the U.S. We talked about all three of them. Uh, the S&P 500, which is our best proxy for the market. The NASDAQ Composite, which comprises most of the NASDAQ stocks. And then the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is the oldest of these three, and it's price-weighted. We talked about value-weighted indexes and price-weighted indexes. Value-weighted indexes, uh, these are weighted based on the size or really the market cap of the stock. So a company like Apple will have more weight than a company like Ford because Ford is significantly smaller in terms of total market cap than Apple. So if Apple has a bad day, uh, valuated indexes are going to, a valuated index is going to uh, see a more negative return than a price weighted index would. And to wrap up, the value of a price weighted index is really just based on the, the average share price of the securities in the index. So with that, I'm going to conclude. And if you have any questions, obviously, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.